this video, we're going to focus on working with the standard text tool. There's a couple different ways you can access it. I like to access it right here from the floating toolbar. If you don't see the text tool here because this is an interactive toolbar, you can always find it up here in the upper left hand corner. If you click on the icon, it will float down and you choose what text option you want. In this case, we focus on the first one that says text, but let me go ahead and access it from here. So I'm going to work with this standard text tool. And when you do that, you'll notice that on your cursor, you have a little A next to it. That lets you know that you have the text tool selected. Now, if I click on the screen, it's going to load the default text called my text. And it always brings this in as my text and it always works with the last font that you worked with. The other thing that I want to point out here is notice that where the text is placed. So when I click, if I click right here, the text is going to be placed right at that spot up and out from there to the right. So if you're working with a design and you want to get it kind of in a position, just keep that in mind. And so once we have text on the screen, it automatically goes into text edit mode. And the reason that I know I'm into, into a text edit mode is because I have these squares and these diamonds. And I have these different options around the selection that are different than when you're just selecting a regular object. This just lets you know that it's ready to work with the text and it knows that you're going to be changing it somewhat. So how do we change the word? Well, we just go up into the properties box over here and we select by clicking and dragging over the text and we can just type in the word digitizing and we can hit apply. And when we hit apply, it's going to change the word to what I have typed in up here. Now there's a number of things that we can do to this text. The first thing that we're going to focus on is what you can do inside of the properties box. Okay. So in the properties box, you have the ability to change the height, the spacing, the line spacing, the width, you have the ability to work with true type fonts, loading them into the system. You have the ability to work with or select different types of fonts. So this is like a filter option. If you know that you want to work with the small font, you can select it. We'll get into these, but I just want to go over the overview a little bit first. And so in here you have the different keyboard fonts that come with the system. So these are ones that you everyone has access to that owns the Floriani FTCU software. And you can select any of those at any time. You also have this question mark off here to the side. If I click on that, it's going to let me know what characters are included with this font. Now, this is very important at times because if you've ever tried to type in a word that was in all caps up here, sometimes you might get a font that doesn't have any capital letters or there's a lot more there's a couple cases where a font only comes in uppercase letters and so you would have to utilize uppercase letters in here in order for it to show up just wanted to point that out the other thing that's important about this is it gives you the minimum and maximum height for this font so it's saying that the smallest that you want to go with this font is either 0.39 inches in the height of the letters or 10 millimeters is the conversion for that or um, a maximum height of three inches okay or 76 millimeters so it's giving you a guideline for this font and so if you're wondering if you've resized something too big or too small, this is how you can figure it out for this font. And that is done using the um, measure tool here, the ruler, and you can click and drag up and you'll notice that it says 0.78 inches. So I'm under the three, but I'm above the point, um, three. let's see, what did it say? The 0.39. And if I was in millimeters, um, that would be a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 70 something. So I'm fine with working with this size of the font. Just wanted to point that out. That's what that 
can be used for that question mark there. Then you also have style. So you'll notice that when I clicked off and I clicked back on, I went into regular selection mode. And that's what happens every time you click off of a font and back onto it. I no longer have those diamonds or the rectangles in here. And I have the standard selection tools. It's very simple to get back to it. I can right click and hit edit text and you'll see all of those features come back up. You also have style, which we can get into and align center left and right. So let's go ahead now at this point and explore some of the options here. So for instance, if I want to change the height of this lettering right now, it's 20 millimeters. I could choose 30 millimeters and hit apply. Now it is in millimeters right here because I'm in millimeters on my ruler. If I right click on the ruler and go back into inches, you'll notice that now it's 1.18 inches. So depending on how you want to work with it is based off of what you have set for your ruler. So in the spacing, I can, I can change the spacing here to like three, hit apply. And you'll notice that it now has a greater um, distance between each letter. I can even go to a negative three and hit apply. So you can put in negative values as well, not just positive values. If I go back to zero, it'll go to the default. So that's how you work with spacing between letters of a word. Then you also have line spacing and that's between two rows of lettering. And so I can come in here at this point and put my cursor after the word digitizing, hit enter and type in master class and hit apply. And when I do that, it's going to load a second row. And because my alignment is set to center, it's centering automatically the word digitizing to the word master class. So that is a very nice little uh, feature. And right here for the line space, you can see the default is 25. If I wanted more space, I could come in here and type in 50 and hit apply. And it's going to change the amount of space in between. Now I could go all the way down to, let's say, um, 11. And you can see that it's going to bring it much closer. So if you want to change the distance between rows of lettering, as long as you have it created this way where you have two rows inside of this text box, you are able to change that right here in line spacing. The width is something that I never really change. It's just something that I do manually when I'm adjusting text. But if I want this to be 1.25 inches wide, specifically, or I mean, I want to go up by 25%, I hit apply, and it will make it wider. I don't, I just don't get into um, resizing it that way. And, um, but it is an option if you want to go up or down by a percentage. Now let's look at the alignment. So we have it center aligned. You have the ability to left align it so that it starts on the left hand side. You can go in and do right alignment and then it will right align the lettering. Very simple standard text options. I'm going to go back to center here. The other thing that you have the option to do is slant it a little bit. So if I choose a value like 25%, and hit apply, you'll notice it's going to slant that text. If that's a little bit too much, and I want to go down to 15. I can just type that in. And it's basically allowing me to italicize the font. That's how you do it. And if I go back to zero, it'll put it back to the default. Next, let's take a look at fonts. So if I select this box right here, um, where it says the Anna font, I can scroll through and choose any font that I want to work with. Let's say I want to work with donuts and I hit apply. It's going to change it to that font. Very standard, um, like working with any kind of a program, you can change the font and um, just by selecting it and choosing apply. But let's say that you really want to focus on certain types of fonts, there are a few options here. If we come up to this first one that says all fonts and we click on it, 
We can choose outline fonts, small fonts, block, script, run, applique, or handwritten. So if I want something that looks kind of handwritten, I can just click on this option. And now when I go to the font selection, it's only going to show me ones that are designated in the program as being more handwritten style lettering. So um, like this one right here is um, a pretty good example there. If I hit apply, it's going to change it to that font. Now, if I want to get it back to see all fonts, I have to come back up here, click it and go to all fonts. If I want something that is um, script, I can choose script. And now it's going to give me fonts that are designated as script fonts. So when I'm, you're working with all caps, it's not generally the best option to work with um, the script. But this one right here, this quick script works pretty well for that. You also have small fonts. Now the small fonts, the one thing I want to point out is they have a 60 next to them. And what that 60 represents is 60 weight thread. It's recommended that you utilize 60 weight thread when you're working with these fonts. And just to give you an example, like if I choose this port four millimeter and I hit apply, it's going to make it that size. It's going to bring it in at four millimeters. And you don't want to resize these 60 weight fonts because they are designed specifically to stitch out at this size. This is your minute tiny lettering. And so it's created to um, work at that size. So you don't want to resize this up or down. Um, at all. You just want to keep it at the size that it is. So I just want to point that out. Let me go back into it and let's go to all fonts again. Um, you can put your mouse in right here. Like I double click, not fast, but once I click, it drops down. I click again and it just um, highlights. And if I use arrow keys on my keyboard, I can just scroll through and I'm just looking right here and what the font looks like. So as I use the little arrow key scrolling down, I can kind of filter through them like this. So it's a nice little feature. Um, I use that quite a bit, or you can just do a drop down. There are some advanced things that you can do with how you choose lettering that we'll get into in other videos, but this is your basic way of editing the lettering. Now, I want to point out at the same time, I, I do want to pick a different font here, go back to one that is a standard size here. Um, the other thing to point out is when you select the text, you have the text tool right here, but you also have the text plus tool. So if I click on that, it gives me options for other things. So for instance, the sequence in which it stitches out, the trim type, the lock type, and if I want to auto color um, characters. So what does this mean? Well, if with this so a sequence set at left, if I do a slow redraw, the letters are going to stitch out left to right. So you can see how that works. It goes from left to right for the word digitizing, left to right for the word masterclass. And it does one um, word and then goes on to the other. So let's go back into this text plus tab with the lettering selected here. And if I choose right and hit apply, always have to hit apply, it'll now go the opposite direction. So now it's going to go from right to left. And again, it's going to finish one word and then go to the next, just like that. And let me come back into it, select it, and go back to the text plus icon. And this time I'll choose center. Now this is what you would use if you were doing a really large lettering or um, primarily for doing hats. If you do hats, you always want to work from the center out. Um, let me go ahead and hit apply here. And how this works is it's going to start from the middle and work its way to one side and then it's going to come back to the middle and work its way to the other side. So um, this is uh, just to help move the fabric the way that um, 
it won't have as many registration issues like on large lettering or um, on caps. It really helps um, position the fabric or move and put the letter letters in in a sequence that helps the, the fabric a little bit better, helps maintain registration. So that is the center out approach. If I come back to this text plus with the lettering selected, you have trim type and right now it's set at always. If I click the the um, box here, you'll notice that I have the option to always trim, never or auto. And what this trim type means is between each letter. So if I want it to always trim between letters, I would choose always. And after it finishes a letter, it will trim and it will go in and do the next letter. And so there will be no jumps. I don't typically do that. I usually use um, never or auto. Auto is pretty neat because what it does is it looks at the distance between. And if the distance is greater than, let's say, five millimeters, it's going to automatically trim. And if it's less than that, it's not going to trim. And you can see that this is pretty big lettering. And you notice that there is trims that take place because there is no jump across. And if we resize the lettering, uh, a lot of times it'll start showing up as jumps. But you can see this lettering is all over the place. Like um, that's why I wanted to come in here and take a look because where one finishes and the other one starts is in a totally different location. Now, the reason for that, if I have this selected, if I go to the text edit, I'm doing center out. If I go back to a left align right here and hit apply, You can see that right here it's jumping, right here it's jumping. And so in a couple of the places it's jumping, but the other places it's actually trimming. It's all based about how far the lettering is from each other. So if I come back over to here, I can choose never and it will never trim between a letter. It'll always jump. And this allows you to see where one starts and ends as well. So you have the lock, if you're going to choose to never trim, you want to have it always lock. A lock is done before or after, um, at the beginning of a letter and at the end of a letter. And if you're going to manually trim it yourself, you'll definitely want to have a lock in there. And I would always choose the always. If we use auto for the trim type, you can use auto or a round trim for the lock type. And that just means is if it's going to trim, it'll lock it automatically. If it's not going to trim, it won't. And so that's the little options that you have. By default, it's set it always and always. That's how it'll show up. And as you learn more about digitizing, you'll definitely want to explore these and, and control where you have trims take place and locks take place. But I just wanted to show that um, those are this is where you'll find it. Auto color characters, if we choose this, it's going to um, basically <laughs> change the the color of each letter. And so you know some people might want to utilize that it's not something that I would utilize very often. And one thing to point out is you'll notice that it has these little squiggly lines in between each letter. That's the little command to do a color change between letters. So you can actually um, put words in and you could have it actually change. Let's go in here and let's change this back to regular. We come back into the text. If I can find that squiggly mark on my keyboard and input it in there and hit apply, you notice that it didn't do anything. Um, it should technically change the color, but, and there it did. So I guess I needed to be right in front of it. Let's go ahead and delete this one and hit apply and see if it's still there. So be, before the word masterclass, 
inputting that little squiggly line, which is on my keyboard, it's in the upper left hand corner. I have to hit shift in that little squiggly line. You can actually have it change the color between lines if you want, or in the middle of a word. If you want it to be um, right here, if I wanted to right before the I and after the T, I could put one right in there, hit apply. And you don't see it until you click off of the text, but you notice that now I have three different um, colors for the text. And it's still one object. So it's not like it is broken it apart or anything. It's still seeing it as one object. And when you hit this little plus symbol, you're going to see that you can change the color. Color one is right here. Color two is right here. Color three is the word master class. So how that works is if you saw the previous video, if I want this to be a light blue color and I come down here and I left click on this, you can see that I need to select that text first and I can change that color to that light blue. I could select this red here and I could say, you know what? I want that to be this pink color. Same thing for this blue. I can make it maybe this green color. So you can see how that works. So working with text is it's very important and it's important to understand how to work with these properties icons here. And the last thing that I want to point out with text is just like any other object, the third tab over is your fill. And this is where you would actually change your density. Um, so I could make this a 0.5 if I wanted to. You also have your standard um, underlay you can change and modify, push and pull compensation, and your resizing. So this is where you can control all of that um, is just right here in the properties box. So that's working with standard text. In another video separate from this, we'll talk about editing the text. So that will focus on working with these tools um, for manipulating the text. In this video, just wanted to give an overview of how it worked, how you create lettering, and the basic modifications in the properties box. Hope this uh, video was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.